Hello, now in this exercise, we're going to first recall that in the ASCII table, the letter A corresponds to an integer value of 65, and the letter capital Z corresponds to an integer value of 90, and you can see that uh, right here. So over here, A, capital A, corresponds to 65, capital Z corresponds to 90. We're going to output the following text. Enter any capital letter from the keyboard, and then we're going to accept the user input, but we're going to actually, instead of storing it as a character, we want to store it as the raw integer value that comes from the keyboard. Then we're going to construct a table of ASCII letters and the corresponding integers beginning from the letter that the user enters and continuing on to capital Z. So effectively we want to reproduce this table. If the user enters A, then we want to print a table that shows A through Z with the corresponding ASCII uh, values. If the user enters H, then we want to start printing from H and 72 all the way up to Z. If the user enters V down here, then we'll start at 86. And so basically wherever the user types in, the first letter is where the table begins. And I have this down here. For example, if the user enters A, the output is shown below. And so we have uh, table headers and we have uh, the letter and the corresponding ASCII value. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and run this to make sure it works. So it says enter any capital letter from the keyboard. Now if we enter, let's say, U, which is near the end of the alphabet, capital U, and hit enter, then we can see that we have uh, a table that's been generated, letter and the ASCII value U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And notice the Z value corresponds to 90. Let me go ahead and kill that. Uh, corresponds to 90. So Z corresponds to 90. U corresponds to 85. So it all seems to work. If I run it again and enter the, cat, the letter A, then we can see, let me go ahead and drag this up like this, we can see the entire table from A, capital A to capital Z is generated from 65 to 90. So basically, wherever I start, if I do J, the table begins with that letter and goes to the letter Z. This is a great example because it forces you to use loops, it forces you to understand keyboard input, and it forces you to kind of understand what ASCII codes are as well. So let's see how I did it, you know, and I'll go ahead and say now as we get farther into the Java course, um, my code is probably going to look a lot different from yours. I'm just showing you how I did it. You may have a totally different way of attacking it, and that's fine. So here we have the Java IO exception throws up here at the top because we're going to be accepting keyboard input using system.in. And I have defined some variables here. The raw input variable is an integer. That's I'm going to accept the keyboard input and put it in there. Uh, into this variable as an integer. Remember, when we use this method, it returns an integer, so I'm going to store it there. I've got a count variable set up because I'm going to do a for loop later. And then when I do the conversion from, uh, from decimal to ASCII, I'm going to store the value in the character called letter. So then I output enter any capital letter from the keyboard, and then I accept the input from the user using system.in.read. But notice I don't have the care, the character cast in front, because I want to take the decimal that comes from this method and store it directly, as in I say decimal. I'm going to take the integer that comes from here and store it directly in this integer variable. The reason I want to do that will become apparent in a minute. So as soon as I get the uh, user input, I want to output to the screen the header. Uh, of my table letter with two tabs tab tab and then ASCII value so that's generating the spacing here between these two columns and then I'm going to set up a for loop because we're going to be going from wherever I input my letter to the keyboard all the way to Z but notice that I accepted the input as an integer so what I'm going to do is set the counter for my for loop equal to whatever the user has typed in and I'm going to continue running this loop as long as the counter is less than or equal to 90. The reason I'm going to go that far is because 90 corresponds to Z. I want the loop to stop whenever I get to 90 because that's the code that corresponds or the number that corresponds to Z. And I'm going to increment this counter. So this loop is going to go, go, go from whatever I start with, whatever letter, all the way up until the code that corresponds to Z. Now inside the loop, each time I come through it, I'm going to convert whatever number my loop is on from an integer, which is, notice the letter, the variable count is an integer, I'm going to convert it to a character and store it in the variable called letter. The way I'm doing that is I take the loop counter, which is a integer, I'm using this parentheses with the character here to convert it from integer into character, and I'm storing it there. And then I simply output to the screen 
the variable letter, which is the actual letter, A, B, C, D, whatever it is, tab, tab, right? And then I have the number of my loop here, which is the ASCII equivalent. So every time down the loop, I'm doing a conversion, printing it out, and then the raw value. And then I cycle through and increment the counter all the way up until I get to Z. So if I type in A, for instance, then A goes into this variable here, A, or I shouldn't say A does, the decimal equivalent of A or the integer value of A, which gets assigned to my loop counter. And then I loop from effectively from the number that corresponds to A to the number that corresponds to Z. Each time I go through, I convert it to a character, output it to the screen with the corresponding code. And that's why whenever I run this guy, if I input a different Let's say I do just do Y. If I input something other than A, it just starts at that place and it goes to Z because I capture this input here and I start the loop from that value that I type in all the way into effectively until Z. That's why whenever I type in different values, uh, it, it starts at different places in the ASCII table. If I start at the letter A, then I get the full table. All right. So it's just kind of an interesting exercise. It gets you comfortable with the ASCII values. It gets you comfortable and just to see that you can read the keyboard input as an integer, but you're just going to get numbers back. That's why we usually have the character cast there so we can have it converted to characters. And so we're doing that in here. Also gives you practice with loops, gives you practice with outputting, and it's, it's a great little... Um, little exercise. Not a very long program, but you have to know the details in order to know how to handle it. Again, your code may look completely different. Uh, you may have slightly different setup, different types of looping, lots of different things going on. This is just one way to tackle this particular exercise.